What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today marks episode two of the build for the Daily 300 ZX. So coming on into here, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be removing the plenum, also removing the valve covers, deleting the coolant lines off the plenum. So all these lines here, and then also removing the EGR. So coolant line delete, EGR delete. So before we get into anything, um, we're just going to go over my parts list really quick that I recorded uh, about a couple, uh, I think it was like two days, two, three days ago. So uh, let's jump to that. So this is what everything looks like inside the box. Um, I'm going to individually take everything out and line it up and then I'm going to talk with you each individual piece of what I ordered and why I ordered it. Okay guys, so this is everything that I got from Z1. Um, and then I did order one thing from Advanced and it was... Uh, the rear, rear main seal and a couple gaskets with that cake. So basically Z1 sells the rear main seal kit for like $30 or something like that. You can actually get the full rear main seal kit from Advance for like $13. So I went that route, obviously. Um, I've had it before, never had an issue with the Advanced uh, kit. So I just went with that. But everything else I got from Z1. Um, so starting from left to right for the parts. So we got here is our two uh, VTC springs for basically this whole kit right here comes together as a kit for a 60K to 120K timing belt kit. There's different things that you can order with it to make it more expensive or you can take things out to make it less expensive. But this kit is the best bang for your buck right now. I think this whole kit was $484, uh, all this. So the kit comes with, like I said, uh, two VTC springs. Then it comes with uh, a thermostat. OEM thermostat comes with two Z1 silicone uh, coolant bypass hoses. Then it also, these are one of the options that you can choose is to get these pulleys. So I got uh, this pulley here. I also got this pulley here. And then the kit also comes with a brand new uh, crank gear here. And this comes with your water pump and water pump gasket. Then it comes with uh, your cam seals here. So it comes with four cam seals. Uh, it comes with the timing belt. The timing belt is great because if you go OEM, they actually give you those tags in there that you can put on the actual um, upper rad support to let you know what mileage you put it at. Um, so Pete, you can't, like people won't, will know that you're not lying when you actually do it. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I did go OEM. I, I was kind of on the fence with the carbon uh, or the, uh, the Gretti uh, belt. The only thing about the Gretti belt, it's an extra $110 or $100, I think. I think this is 50 and then the Gretti belt's 150 So I kind of, like I said, I'm not really beating on this car. It's an NA. I'm not going for horsepower or anything with this car. So I was OEM would be totally fine. So did that. And then it also comes with your ten tensioner. So this full kit from here over oh and i also forgot it also comes with the uh, oil crank seal here too and then when you put it all together like i said this is my kit my kit came up to 484 dollars. so all the stuff that i just went over 484 dollars. if you wanted to add like the rear main seal kit and things like that obviously it goes up in price if you wanted to do uh, if you didn't want the pulleys it would go down in price and um if you want a different belt obviously it would go up so that's that kit there then i also ordered um a part of the uh, I wanted to go OEM for this. Uh, this is actually the gasket for um, the bracket that holds in the rear main seal. So I just went OEM with that. Um, this is this one I typically don't use from Advance in that $13 kit. So definitely go yeah, OEM. This was like $2.50 or something like that. Then I have um, our brake master brace here. So this is like 20 bucks. And since I put this on the drift car, I've seen such a like traumatic or dramatic difference um in the braking performance so this is key for a 20 dollars like fix it's not even really a fix it's like an upgrade it makes your braking system insane so this is pretty sweet so got that then i went with since we have everything out of the car i was like you know what i can delete some lines um and i'll be able to basically just put this stainless steel line that goes from the clutch master all the way down to the slave 
and all I have to do is bleed the slave now, and it'll uh, I'll be able to. That's how I can bleed my clutch system now. So this is super sick. This was like fifty bucks. That's not bad at all for that. Um, so I'll be able to delete that line that runs down that passenger side frame rail or that passenger side fender, um, and it goes down to the frame rail, and I can delete that whole block and brick. So that's going to be absolutely insane. I can't wait for that. I'm super pumped about that. So going from there, uh, I have my valve cover gasket kit, obviously like in our previous video that I showed you on the drift car. Um, it comes with the gaskets that you need, the two moons and the RTV. So the RTV is usually used just for the exhaust uh, valve covers. And then for the intake valve covers uses these gaskets. Then my plenum seal. So brand new OEM plenum seal. Always need that. Throttle body gaskets to clean up those throttle bodies. Then since we're on that, we're going to move up to here. Our IAC gasket. So when we take off the IAC, clean it up. We're going to use that. Then we have our uh, power steering, power steering uh, repair kit. So it's a brand new kit basically to just uh, s seal up your power steering uh, pump. Because my pump was leaking. That's why I was smelling that power steering fluid like I announced in the first video, in the first episode. And then it comes with some extra gaskets. Uh, balance two O-rings. Always order these guys. Don't forget it because you don't want to RTV your balance tube because it sucks trying to get off the plenum. Then we have our uh, uh, fuel rail to plenum seals. So this basically when we do our injectors change, um, these seals sit, basically the fuel rail sits into these, into the plenum. So it provides a good seal. So there's no leaking or anything like that. Then these guys... They had their own, they had their own big bag just by themselves. So Robbie is actually hooking me up. So as I showed you guys in the first episode, the first episode, I have the phase one injectors um, and the wiring kit on my car because that's the original way how it came. Well, I got phase two injectors while Rock Auto was doing a sale. I got phase two injectors for $60. Typically it's $600 to get your injectors. I got them for $60 brand new, not refurbished, brand new. So um, Robbie's hooking me up with the actual adapter kit from phase one to phase two. So early style to new style. Um, the only thing that he said I needed were these lower O-rings for the kit because it has like a little piece where these have to go around. So it also provides a good seal in the rail. So I had to order these. These were six of these. So um, six of those, six of those. I got all that, went through everything there. Then um, I did a little bit of research and talked to some guys. Um, these were like $12.00. Uh, and I mean, you, you might as well just do it. Um, the, the ones that come actually with the aftermarket headers, which I ordered, um, and I already have them in and I wrap them. Basically these are going to work a lot better than those crappy Chinese, uh, gaskets that they give you for your, uh, headers. So I just went with that. So I know it's OEM. It's going to be fine. Um, and then one of my favorite things is I got the whole entire Z spec uh, engine dress up kit. So this comes from Z spec, which these dudes are awesome. It comes with every bolt and washer and nut and whatever you need to dress up your engine bay. This, it comes with this and it comes with directions and tells you exactly what you need. The only thing it doesn't come with is Loctite. So you got to make sure that you get some Loctite for everything. But the, I mean, this comes with timing cover bolts, uh, valve cover bolts, like anything and everything in the engine bay that's basically visible, this kit. This was 150 bucks, but it's well worth it, well organized. It's going to make things so much simpler. So even though I put all those bolts back in the hole so I would never lose them, now I don't need to worry about that because now I got this. So super pumped. Thanks, guys, for that. And I also forgot to mention, I actually got, um, I found some on eBay, some OEM uh, motor mounts. So that's pretty sick. I got these for like 40 bucks, which is sick. So I'm super pumped about that. Um, yes, I, I kind of wanted to go Z1 route, um, like part poly, part, part solid, or just go solid in general. But how the drift car feels with the solid motor mounts, um, it, there's definitely like a vibration feel you can feel. But I, I like that in the drift car because it's a race car. I want to be able to feel everything. But with this car, I, I want it to just be a nice, easy, smooth transition, nice shifts. I don't want to feel any vibrations mainly. So that's why I went with these. I just went back to OEM for these. Um, it might be a pain. It might not. I don't know. But I just liked how the old ones felt. 
um, they were pretty corroded and pretty shot because I mean, it's been sitting on it for 30 years. So, but I mean, for 40 bucks for these, it's not bad at all. So the only thing about these is that you want to be able to go to the uh, auto parts store and find some matching hardware for these, just in case if the OEM hardware doesn't work. Uh, because I don't know, like these aren't strictly from Nissan. They're from another company. So sometimes their threads are messed up or it's the wrong thread pitch or whatever. So before you waste your time, just go to the auto parts store get a couple nuts, get a couple washers and go from there. Or even if you just need the nuts because you already have the washers from the OEM ones on the car already. So the only thing that I didn't get in from Z1 that I ordered was the uh, Redline MT90 transmission fluid. I ordered three quarts because that's what we're going to need um, for an NA at least. Uh, basically, they just said that it's coming from the distributor. So I have to wait for that to come in. So that's the only thing I'm waiting for. And going off of that uh, now, back in present time, I got my MT90 from Z1. I got my oil pan gasket kit. That's everything that we went over. I have some hose clamps. I have my phase two fuel injectors, my clutch, and then also my headers that are wrapped already. So Going off of there, we're pretty much straight. Uh, like I said, all we really gotta do now is just start working on all of this. So basically what I'm gonna do now is uh, lift the hoist up a little bit just so this gets out of the way. Cause what we're gonna wanna do is take all of our coil packs out, take all of our coil packs out, put that hardware aside. And then uh, what we'll start doing is start working on the plenum bolts. Robbie said a pretty easy task to kinda just get this done in an easy manner is just cut um, these coolant lines. So just like snip them, get some snips and just start cutting them. Um, it's just gonna make it a lot easier when we just pull the plenum off the top. So I got all the coil packs off and then I did all the bolts from the plenum here. So as you can see, um, these go in a particular order. So you wanna make sure that you keep them like this. So what I'm gonna do is rip off a piece of a box and I'm just gonna put them through the box to make sure that they're in the correct order from top to bottom of the motor. So towards the transmission, down towards the front of the motor. Um, going off of that, then you're gonna have two brackets on each side. So there's gonna be a bracket like he right here, basically where the EGR uh, wiring sits. You're gonna have to take this bracket off so there's uh, four bolts on there and then same thing on the other side. So this is a prime example of what I meant by how the EGR ports sit on there is this is exactly what I was talking about. So this is the passenger side. So this EGR uh, setup here, or like solenoid, basically sits on this bracket. So passenger side, driver side. Uh, the driver side one was easier to get to to be able to take everything off. This one was a little bit tougher because there's a lot more um, wirings uh, and fixtures on the passenger side. So, but once you get these off, uh, basically you can just toss these. So weight reduction, whatever. Um, then going on from there, what you're going to want to have to do is, uh, loosen up or like remove these hoses from the PCVs. So from, uh, this side here, uh, the driver's side, you can see this hose here, and then we're going to go to the passenger side and we're going to remove this hose here. So I got the PCV lines off. So there, and then on the other side. So now you're gonna be able to see that this moves pretty freely. The plenum moves pretty freely. So now what I'm gonna have to do is uh, some of the coolant lines are running to these heater hoses. So what we have to, do, or these like heater lines, what we have to do is look at where the lines are running to. So you can see here, this one runs to this one. So we have to cut this line and then this one runs to, it's hard to see, but this line here. So we're also gonna have to cut that too. Just to the fact that these are stationary and we need to be able to remove this. So those lines need to be slit or cut or removed. The easiest way is just cutting them because you're not gonna have to use them anyways. And also we're gonna need to cut this line right here because this line comes down and connects to this heater hose here. And then after that, <laughs> We're gonna start taking our EGR off. So, hey, one of the first steps to getting this whole contraption off is we're gonna follow this pipe, goes down, down, and it cut bolts up to the plenum here. There's two 10 millimeter bolts here on each side. So we're gonna uh, remove the two tens over there, this two tens, and then after those lines are cut, you should be able to pull this up. 
So before we could actually take it off, um, there was this hose right here also. It runs right directly under the plenum that we had to disconnect. And then there's one more coming from over here. Yeah, it goes up underneath here. Yeah. So, uno mas. So basically this line and the, the one directly under it is the next one you're going to want to take off. And it, it doesn't really matter if you mess up these hoses because we're deleting out all this. Oh, we spit. And then, oh, 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 there we go. Oh, what else we got here? I see a ground. That's, no, that, it's not ours. Oh, in the middle here. This little guy, you get uh, cutters. See. Oh, no, that is uh, part of the fuel line. We don't want to cut this one. Oh. So one thing I did forget, guys, is off this fuel pressure regulator right here, there's a fuel line that we got to disconnect. Totally forgot about that one. So that one fuel line that I totally forgot to disconnect because we already did this one earlier, uh, the fuel pressure regulator line. We did this one earlier when we actually pulled off um, those fuel lines, but this one was still connected because it goes lower down here. So didn't see that one. My bad, Andrew. But uh, we got it off. So literally that was our last step was just to get that fuel line. It's off, there she is. Basically we can flip this over and what we're gonna do is look at all these freaking coolant lines that run under here and it's super easy because there's just a few bolts to actually just unbolt it and we can take them all off at once. You can see this is our plenum gasket here and I'm taking it off. It actually came off really well, I like that. I don't really have to go do a lot of scraping. So that's junk. And then all you're gonna do is come off here off the throttle bodies you're gonna see this line here where you can cut it you can do whatever you want to it but this is getting deleted um, and then we're just gonna follow this line here this is also getting deleted so we're just gonna cut this line get pull them off of like the PCV valve area uh, this line you can cut take it off and then just unbolt the 10 millimeter bolts just follow around and you're gonna see the route of where the lines go and just literally just take them off throw them away see you later and then I'll show you later on if you need to cap something or if not. On this side, it's pretty much the same thing. 10 millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter bolt. Take this off, cut this line, see you later. Cut this line, see you later. And cut this line, see you later. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay guys, so what Robbie's doing right now is starting to work on the valve covers. If you guys want to uh, know how to take the valve covers off and also the spark plug tubes, uh, we do have a previous video, so just go ahead and check out the previous video. guys so uh the next step here to get these two lines off i got all of the uh, all the rest of them off this line right here you just have to take this module off real quick um it's two 10 millimeter bolts take those off and then you'll be able to slip this line through since we unbolted this we're actually deleting this so this module here is basically for uh when the car is warming up in cold environments th this basically raises the idle we're getting rid of this so when uh we are warming up the car now we're not going to have that high idle it's going to warm up at a lower idle so we're just literally just deleting this and then what we'll do is use a hose with like a uh bolt here to block off this part of it and uh with some sealant and it'll be good to go now with the coolant line delete that we just did off the plenum these are the lines that are coming off here into these actual uh heater hose here uh robbie said what you can do is there's like basically two methods that a lot of z people guy like z guys use is that you can actually cut these off and then you can pinch them shut weld them shut whatever um or you can just basically put like a, a coolant cap from like a local auto parts store on and uh clamp it down and then you'll be good to go so that's the route that i'm gonna go because i don't have a welder and i'm not good at welding and uh i don't want to just pinch them shut because i mean i don't know i i just rather have them capped off know they're good and safe so that's what our what we're gonna do so um for like this line since it's so long what we will do is probably cut it and then cap it from like that cut wherever we cut it obviously we're gonna the main goal is to cut it at like 
close short as yeah point. short as possible so um just for looks and whatever um so then so what we'll have to do is do it on this line here there's one here and then there's one up here on the well the front side yeah there's one here and then one here one right there and then let me see if i can get this back over here for you and right where his finger is so it there's up yeah yeah and they and comes around each so there, yeah so there's four two per each side so that's what we're gonna we'll cut and then we'll cap and then we'll be good to go and then that means all of your uh plenum coolant lines are deleted so now moving on to that we're going to the egr so now this is a task on itself and i give props to whoever does it with the car still or the motor still in the car because that is a lot of work but um what we're going to be doing is deleting this module here and all the lines running off of that so but yeah a lot of people have trouble with this nut here this one rusts into the manifold a lot of the times and the uh, brake master cylinder sits right here so it's right in your way and you got to have a 22 millimeter wrench it's not a small wrench so <laughs> trying to fit that in that space trying to do all that in the car sucks but it's not impossible people have done it uh, once you get this nut out here you can basically just cut the lines or you can pop the the coolant hard lines off and then you can just unscrew the two yeah. side pipes that go into the intake mm -hmm. and then just unbolt it and pop it out yeah but so this is basically the that's hard the hardest part, part. Yeah. yeah um so going off of here if you actually do take these off just remember that you're gonna have to reseal these when you put them back on uh just to the fact that uh you don't want any leaks or anything like that also these bolts I, if i remember correctly have to stay in the egr when you pull it up and out because they're so long, it'll hit the fire. It'll hit the firewall before you can actually pull it all the way out. So you just have to. Pull oh, okay. You're talking about yeah. uh, if, it, it, if it's, it's, in, it's in, the in, the in the car. Yeah. yeah. If okay. it's in the car. <laughs> yeah. Got you. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> but okay. So going off of that, uh, what we're gonna do now is start taking off these side pipes here and uh, this module. And what Robbie's doing right now is taking the heater lines off just so we can get easier, easier like clearance for these bolts, so we can take these off. Can't find my box end. <laughs> So, oh yeah, those are yeah, that's deleted. deleted. Yeah. So, um, this line right here, guys. So this is going to be a part of the PCV delete uh, situation that we're doing. So we don't need that hose anymore. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we, the bolt under yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a oh, bolt under there. There's a bolt under here holding this bracket up. But we're going to take that off. Um, we have an exhaust uh, valve cover here that actually already has all these plugged up. So that's going to be a part of the uh, PCV delete scenario okay guys so now since what i have to do is since these are phase one injectors and i'm going with phase two injectors or new style injectors we're gonna have to uh, remove this fuel rail here to remove the fuel rail is pretty simple there's gonna be three bolts on each side and we're gonna take basically just take those bolts out which we already did and then it's pretty simple all you have to do is pull up on the uh fuel rail but there is a seal, like there are O-rings down there. Um, so it is sealed. So it might give you like a little fight, but um, you just want to make sure that uh, you just get this off nice and easily. And then also the uh, ground here. And then uh, Robbie's going to talk to you guys about these uh, little spacer insulators uh, for the fuel rail itself. So when you go and pull the rail off, sometimes these things don't stay together. When you pick the rail up, just be careful you don't lose one. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Yeah. Right here. But these spacers, they go on one on the bottom and one on the top, and they lock together. If I can work my fingers here. All right. And you can see, like on this one, the bolt goes through it. It spaces the fuel rail away from the intake plenum, a certain distance there. Yeah. So. That's how to remove the fuel rail off the lower plenum. Um, and then when you do that, as you can see, these seals are pretty shot. And I ordered all these, as you guys saw in the previous video with all the parts I ordered, these I've also ordered. 
So um, going off of here, we're gonna take these seals off, clean this up a little bit, and then I'll have Robbie talk to you about um, what we have to do to make those uh, work with the uh, new style injectors. Going off of here, off the fuel rail, basically what I'm gonna be doing now is taking off our uh, headers. So what the first thing what you wanna do is take out your O2 sensors, just to the fact that since this is stationary, it's gonna be a lot easier to crack these up, uh, crack these open and get them off. So there's one on each side. So I just uh, spayed, or sprayed PB Blaster on them um, and now I'm just gonna take them off. So now to work on your headers, it's pretty simple. All you're gonna do is find these bolts here. So one, two, three, and then down on the other side, there's gonna be one, two, three. So six bolts per each header on each side. Um, as you can see, I have my headers all set and pre-wrapped. There they are, looking for them. So headers are pre-wrapped, ready to go. Um, I have, I'm gonna be posting a video on how to actually wrap your headers, but what we're gonna do is start working on these. Going off of the EGR delete and the coolant line for the plenum delete, that's basically it for tonight. Um, so hopefully you guys found this information super helpful. Thank you again, Robbie, for coming through with all the knowledge and showing us exactly what we need to cut, what we need to take off, what we can keep, what we don't need. Um, and again, Andrew, for letting us freaking use the shop. So super pumped. So this is for episode two. Episode three, we're gonna be working on the uh, early style fuel injectors to the uh, new style fuel injectors and the whole fuel rail setup with all the uh, O-rings and such. So stay tuned. Thank you for all the support. We just broke 3,500 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot to us. We are climbing and climbing and it's amazing to see. So we got more footage for you guys coming up. With that being said, guys, remember to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.